Hey everybody. So uh, today on the technology and the design, I wanted to talk about color. I think that color is often misunderstood by new designers and the reason I wanted to talk about it was because I think that there are fantastic resources out there that can help us to understand and use color better in design. Um, I'll give you an example. When I'm doing uh, graphic design work, I will often do my work in uh, black, white, grayscale uh, before I even think about color. In other words, I come to some sense of completion before I decide to use uh, color in my design because I feel like uh, color is very necessary, that it's incredibly important. But I also feel like uh, it can get in the way if you start with color. Usually if I'm doing a design consult, I will ask somebody if they like a particular uh, color scheme or if they're already using a color scheme, particular colors especially. Because I want to know that in the event that I want to introduce grayscale or black and white elements into my design, I need to know how I'm going to provide the contrast using pre-existing colors. If no pre-existing colors exist, I have a lot more flexibility. And uh, I'm not a color theorist. I know a lot about color theory, but I'm, I'm certainly not an expert in uh, pulling colors together. Luckily, I don't have to be because many, many people already do this. <clears throat> so. I will often look at a particular um, project. Let's say that the project is about uh, selling strategies, or let's say that the project is about uh, a health product, or let's say that the product is food related, or let's say that the product is um, automotive. Each of those industries have some palettes that will speak more to those audiences. In the selling strategies, for example, uh, we might actually take a scanned dollar bill and use the tones in a dollar bill, the rich black of the text, the um, very fine, beautiful light green of the background, the more intense green of um, the printing that's done on top of it and note that there's no red in there, note that there is no purple in there, note that there's no uh, other wildly different uh, color aside from green and gray and black. Maybe you know that the, the um, serial number might have some different color but generally speaking when you look at a dollar bill you have an impression, a U.S. American dollar bill, you have an impression of the color scheme that that money represents. So by using that, by using that uh, color palette, we immediately, before anybody reads any text on the design or before anybody really assesses the shapes, they already have some idea that it has something to do with money even if they don't make the association because they've seen money so many times. You handle money every day probably and it's highly recognizable. The American flag is highly recognizable. The, I mean the, the pop artists really were amazing at this. So anyway, um, that palette though is going to have a certain effect and the reason that I'm showing you these palettes is that uh, these particular palettes will have a certain effect too. In other words, if I use this palette here, this yellow, blue, and red, versus this palette here, this yellow, blue, and red, it's going to have a different effect on the viewer. It's going to have a slightly different effect because of the way that the uh, tone is used. Whereas if I use uh, these palettes here, this light middle and darker uh, goldish tone, or these palettes here, maybe with a nice contrasting black. Uh, this is going to, in, in my opinion, it will have sort of a royal effect, or, or it reminds me almost of a desert. Just that palette there sort of reminds me 
of a desert. And so uh, I might use that in a landscape scene, or I might use that in order to indicate something that is uh, strongly ethnic, or if I was uh, working on a design about um, the Middle East, or about uh, the Iraq War, or uh, many other things that have to do with those ideas, I might use the palette in order to reinforce and underline that. We look here at uh, some blues and purples. You can see that those effects will uh, have a more dreamy sort of feel to them. And if we just took the red out of it and used that red, or just used the purple, those might have different effects too. You know, here we see a, a palette of reds varying in tone. And even just this variation in um, this variation in tint has an effect. It creates a palette. It almost looks like translucent pink sheets on top of one another. And uh, can be interesting in and of itself. So anyway, there are many books like this. You also might want to look at uh, famous photos. You know, so here I have a book of a thousand uh, record covers, and if if we go through, we can see that each of these photos has a palette to it, right? And some of them are very fun you know, and very nostalgic, and very rich, and have a certain look and feel just because of the color that has nothing to do uh, necessarily with the content. And I almost think about color as content. Here's an example this um, text on a green shirt with skin tone, with gray in the background. People often forget about the background. When you're designing on a white background, sometimes uh, it gives a, a quieting effect to your design just because there's nothing going on in the background. It, it lacks depth. And that yellow stripe that goes across, the, that is a beautiful palette right there. And would it have a very certain kind of a dark, uh, possibly militaristic, um, you know, that, that gold and the black on the green have a definite sort of, it reminds me of a general's chest. So anyway, the other thing about this is that you can take those colors that are either in a photo or in a palette, and you can find them online. And once you have the digital image of that palette or the photo with a palette in it, you can save it to a local directory and use it for reference. So very often part of my workflow in my design is I will um, create my design as I wish, usually in Inkscape or, or the GIMP, and then I will import that palette image or photo, even though I don't actually intend for it to be seen in and of itself, the, the image of the palette or the image of the photo with the palette in it, in the design. I'll import it into my design and then use a color dropper in order to bring those colors in. And I think that it's a very effective way, very easy way, to uh, get the palette to be exactly, precisely what it is in the photo or in that palette. You might wonder where you can uh, go to find good palette images online. I would suggest Pinterest. I think Pinterest is a fantastic place. As a matter of fact, you can go to Pinterest and do a search on boards where people collect palettes. You'll probably see mine there. I have a palette board in Pinterest. Uh, you can also go to colorlovers.com. It's color spelled with a U, but if you type in the American spelling, um, C-O-L-O-R, L-O-V-E-R-S. It will redirect to color with you, lovers. And there you can do a search on keywords. So you can do a search on uh, Iraq, or you could do a search on financial, or you could do a search on dollar bill, 
or you could do a search on um, whatever related idea you're working on a design project for. And other people who have created these palettes there will have left their palette there for you to use. There are some licensing issues with colorlovers.com. Uh, some people protect the reuse of their palette and you want to respect that. Uh, but many people there, Creative Commons license their palettes and so you want to keep that in consideration. At any rate, um, color, incredibly important in design and often uh, left behind as a uh, secondary thought or maybe not even thought of at all in uh, new designer work. So I want you to think about it though. And um, thanks so much for listening. I will see you again next week.